Auto Obsessed here. Today we're going to show you some of the best practices on preparing the paint surface. We want to remove contaminants, possibly old waxes and sealants, and prepare the paint for potentially polishing or putting a nice last step product on such as wax, sealants, or nano coatings. And we have a number of products to achieve this. Our first step in this process is to wash the vehicle. We want to get off any dirt, grime, anything that's sitting on top of the surface to prevent scratching in our later stages. We can also use a couple products to help remove the wax and sealant in the wash stages. Chemical Guys makes one called Citrus Wash and Gloss, Migliori makes one. We can also use a product from Griel's Garage that can be used after the wash stage as a spray on product to remove waxes and sealants. CarPro makes a, a few products to help remove some of the embedded contaminants such as Iron X for iron that's embedded into the paint, tar for tar that's in the surface of the vehicle, and a combination of both tricks. We also have several clays. Clays can be used in combination with the chemicals or on their own. We've got a clay from Sonus, Chemical Guys, Griel's Garage, Swiss Fax, and we also carry a few synthetic clays, Nano Skin, Chemical Guys, and Ultima. We've washed and dried the car to remove as much surface contaminants as we could during the wash stage. To review these best practices, visit our YouTube channel, Auto Obsessed, on how to wash the car best practices. So after uh, evaluating the vehicle after the wash and dry, we notice that the vehicle still has lots of contaminants on the paint. On a close inspection, you'll see orange spots, which are iron deposits that are embedded into the clear coat, and we have black spots, which are probably tar. So what we need to do now is take a further look at that, use some chemicals, clay process to remove these and make the paint perfectly smooth and clean. We're gonna start by removing the tar spots on this vehicle. These are generally the, the black dots that are left behind after the wash stage. We're going to use a tar removal product for this. Choose the tar removal product that's best suited for your vehicle and always follow the manufacturer's recommended instructions. We've let the product dwell on the vehicle for a few moments. You can pretty much instantly see the tar being dissolved by the product and, and dripping down the paint. We're just going to let it sit for a couple minutes as, as part of the manufacturer instructions and then we'll rinse it off. We successfully removed the tar from this vehicle. We've rinsed off the product and now we're going to go and we're going to remove the iron particles that are still embedded in the clear coat. We're just going to spray the product onto the vehicle and let it dwell. Here we can see the iron removal product reacting with the iron. It's, it's turning the iron particles purple as it's dissolving the iron. We've removed the contaminants from the car and rinsed it, and now we can see an immediate improvement. In this stage of the detailing process, use clay to shear off the remaining contaminants left on the paint surface. So we're gonna use an ultra-fine clay for this example. The reason we use clay is there's still gonna be contaminants left on the surface even after all the chemical stages we've gone through, even after the wash. Uh, to see which areas of the vehicle have the contaminants left on it. If the, if the surface is wet, you can glide your hand across the surface and just gently uh, feel the imperfections, kind of like, uh, like, like bumps. Uh, the gloves will amplify it. If you put a, a slide a, a very thin plastic bag over your hand, it'll amplify and feel what areas you need to clay. So the way the clay works, the easiest way for me to describe the way clay works is, is, is shaving. So we would use a, a shaving cream to lubricate the skin. So when we slide the blade across the skin, we don't scratch, we don't cut. Very similar to how we clay a vehicle. We spray a lubricant on the vehicle, we flatten the clay out, and we gently glide it across where there's a barrier of lubricant between the clay and we just glide it across and anything that's sticking above the paint surface will be sheared off. To start the claying process, we want to use ample amount of clay lubricant. We're just going to spray that on the area we're going to work. 
A best practice is before you start claying, just inspect the panel. You're looking for uh, scratches, any swirls. You just want to ensure that you're not incurring any more damage than, 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 um, than what's already there. So we usually do an inspection. We've done that already. We've, we've applied the lubricant on there. We're going to take the clay bar. We're going to rip off some of the clay. We don't need to use the whole bar for this. So we'll put that away in a clean spot for later. And we just play with it a little bit. We can roll it. And we just kind of want to make it into, into more of a pancake, something flat so we can run it across the surface much easier and pick up as much as we can. So once again, clean, you know, we're just going to pick up anything that's still left behind. You want to make sure that it's well lubricated so we're not doing any scratching. You don't have to apply much pressure at all. Uh, when you glide the clay across the surface, it doesn't really matter which direction you do it in, up and down, side to side. And you can generally feel, you'll be able to feel when you come across something or if the room is quiet enough, you'll actually be able to hear a click, 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 and then you'll hear it disappear. So I'm just running the clay up and down just until I don't feel any more contaminants on the surface. And we're gonna inspect the clay, make sure everything's okay. Just some best practices now. If we were to accidentally drop the clay, discard the clay. We don't want to risk picking up any bits of sand or any debris and carrying that across the car. Once the clay starts getting really dirty, you want to fold that over and use a clean part of the clay. There's no reason why you would need to do the whole vehicle in clay unless the whole vehicle required it. So again, you're going to inspect and test each area. Normally on a vehicle, you're going to get areas from behind the front wheels about up to the door handles through the back of the vehicle and usually the, the entire back, the trunk, the, the whole bumper around the tailpipes. Uh, some cars, depending on where they are, the roof might require it. But once again, each vehicle is going to be different and you're going to want to do those checks beforehand. This clay picked up a fair amount of contaminants that we couldn't see on the paint surface. So periodically, through each section, check the clay, ensure that it still has a clean section. If not, fold it over, get a whole new clean section, and then continue on this process throughout the entire vehicle. There are a number of clay options available, whether you choose from a traditional clay or synthetic clay, both of which start out with a fine and go into a heavy grade. Choose the clay that's most appropriate for your paint's condition. We recommend you start out with an ultra-fine clay, and then if that isn't pulling the contaminants, then work your way up to a heavy grade. Another best practice, we suggest you inspect the panel before you clay, then clay the panel, then inspect it once again. This just ensures that you're not incurring any further damage. Whether you choose a traditional clay or synthetic clay, both of which use a clay lubricant, so select the appropriate lubricant. This concludes our decontamination process. Behind us, this vehicle has been decontaminated and the paint is perfectly smooth. It's now ready for our last step product, whether that's a wax, a sealant, or a nano coating, or it's the paint's properly prepared for polishing. These products and many other premium detailing products can be found online at autoobsessed.com.